Okay, fellas, been back again. Another maintenance procedure after about uh, close to 10,000 kilometers. I'm going to be uh, checking the condition of my valves again. So that's the exhaust valve on the top, the intake valve, valve clearance. Not exactly uh, the valves, but the valve clearance. And it's a pretty straightforward job. I've already made a video on this, but uh, just so that, you know, I let you know that I do a periodic a maintenance i have a periodic maintenance uh, schedule and i keep up uh, with it i am making this video again just so that you know you can see what i do how i go about doing it and maybe do it to your motorcycle as well if it has gone past 5000 kilometers uh, it's kind of um, good to keep the valve clearance in check now to open the tank to open the tank what you need to do is just remove these bolts pull the fuel pump connector that is your fuel pump connector with some dielectric grease so that takes care of the waterproofing part of it and then we'll be getting rid of this as well well, we'll have some cloth here press and pull yep the excess fuel just so that doesn't spill on your paint There you go. So connector out, fuel line out, removing the bolts. Okay, so once you have the bolts loosened, I have a, a ratchet, a quarter drive ratchet. And once you have, these are 10 millimeter nuts. So 10 millimeters both loosen, pull them out like that and place them somewhere safe there you go and remember to look for steel spacers underneath like that you need to be taking care of this yep now what you'll do is now you lift the tank here and you gently wiggle it backwards you'll have to lift it from here and there yeah and pull it back now gently lift the tank put your hand underneath and pull those hoses they have some retaining clips so you'll have to move the clips out of the way and then pull the hoses out there you go one and two this is for the drain and that is for the evap now you can lift the tank and pull it out oops there's uh one one more connector I don't know if you guys can see this this is for the fuel level yeah press on it and release it as well So like I said, two hoses, one for the overflow drain and one for the evap. And that exposes the top side of your engine and your chassis. 
this will be a good time to inspect for cracks and the likes of it right here at the collar nothing nothing to worry on mine is because my forks are in good order okay so now what you do after you've gotten rid of the tank is you open the inspection window up or the window from which you can access the crankshaft and the flywheel so you open this get your this would be not written uh, this would be five millimeters i believe so that would be a size five be careful with bolts so that's your inspection window or the window from which you can rotate your crankshaft and then you open this fellow up with a size 17 open end spanner if you need more leverage of course you can use the extension bar comes along with royal and field take care of the copper crush washer as well all these fellows to be kept safely now to open these fellows up they are 8 millimeter nuts this would be the inspection window for the exhaust valve and this for the intake valve you have two nuts or bolts on both the sides here and here as well one done you need to be very careful not to strip the threads so the right angle is very very important to three and one more which is a bit tricky this fella this fella is the only fella which is a little tricky so i'll have to go in from the inside and then open it let me just do that okay so now that you have loosened up that as well all four bolts loosened what you need to do is you need to remove your spark plug one word of caution when you play with spark plugs and inspection windows is for you to see to it that there's absolutely no dust anywhere wipe off all the dust and all the dirt and grime and only then open these fellows otherwise you're risking getting dirt into the internals of your engine which is just a terrible thing to do okay so now that you know things are clean you can go ahead and remove these inspection nuts or inspection caps to remove the spark plug this comes along with the royal and field kit shove that in and long time since i did a plug chop so yeah can't get it out just my hand
Okay, so let me get rid of the spark plug, remove the inspection windows, and then get back to you guys. Okay, so that's me removing my spark plug, and this is the condition of my spark plug. Nice grey tan, with a nice dark ring. The central electrode seems to have discoloration happen towards the end. That is one quarter to three quarter, so I'm kind of in the good mixture range. Uh, slightly, one tiny bit uh, more uh, rich than uh, the stock factory uh, Royal Enfield Himalayans is because of the power tonic that I'm running. And that's a beautiful tan, that's a very, very good mixture. All these little bits of uh, specks that you see is the tiny amount of oil that this machine is burning. Uh, with age, every machine undergoes this, and those tiny specks that you see, I don't know if you, the, capture can, the camera can capture it, but that's nothing to be concerned about. That's totally fine. Okay, so that is the inlet valve, if you guys can see it, and that is the inspection cover of the inlet valve, it comes out like this, and you have access to the inlet valve, and that would be the exhaust valve, easy as easy as that okay so that is a 19 size 19 adapter that goes in and what you do is you try and rotate the crank yeah if you guys can see through the sight hole I'm going to rotate in clockwise direction and try and get a T mark to come up. There are these marks on the flywheel and each mark stands for a certain state of the engine. So T stands for top dead center as you guys can see and what you need to do is just align the T to or just a bit after the T. There is a small line that you see that should be aligned and that F stands for firing or I believe firing and then you can of course go back and forth a little bit and then align that line that you see after T to this line on the engine casing. So the line that comes up immediately after the T mark to be aligned to the engine casing. Now once that is done what you'll be able to see now is I'll be able to move my valve. That is my valves, if they are in compression stroke, then there will be enough clearance here for me to move the rocker arms. And as you guys can hear, you'll be able to hear that clatter. The intake valve, pretty tight, but I can still move it, yeah. Of course I can move it, doesn't make a lot of noise, but of course I can move it. So if, if this TD, if this mark, if the T mark comes up and you can move your valves, then you know that you are at the right top dead center position to make adjustments to your tappets. Both of this will be super tight 
at one point at one cycle and at the next cycle of TDC you will have the valves free up so when the valves when, when sorry the valve the tappets the rocker arms free up so when you are able to hear that when you are able to hear that free movement is when you is where you adjust you do not adjust tappet clearance when you are not able to move anything here and it is super tight that would mean you are at false tdc so now i am at right tdc remember 360 degrees t mark pull and push this and see if this goes up and down and makes that noise you're good to go 360 degrees t mark and you move this and see nothing happens super tight rock solid you should not be adjusting your valve clearances there at that point so now that we are at the t mark right right after the t mark just a bit there that should do it there's a line align these two lines together one on the casing to one on the flywheel and you're good to adjust your valve clearance now so now what i have to do is i've got my feeler gauge can be bought anywhere in any automotive spare parts outlets you can get your feeler gauge remember the values i will mention the values now on the screen so the values for the inlet valve is 0 0.09 and the values for the exhaust valve is 0 0.23 or 0 0.24 or even 0 0.25 a slightly loose exhaust valve is always good for, an uh, for a single cylinder long stroke motorcycle. So I'm going to be adjusting it now with my blades just to see if everything is in order. If all is well then I'll not adjust it. If, I, if it needs any adjustment then I'll do it. So that's a 0 0.102 which is definitely slightly larger than 0 0.09 but that's alright. I'm going to be getting a nice tight snug fit with this can i shove it in does it go in nice and easy if it goes in then it needs a bit of tightening but if there is resistance and i can't slide it in comfortably then that means that's a 0 0.09 well adjusted I will attach a clip of where exactly do you push this in and uh, test the valve clearance. Okay, so, all good, all good. I'll just use both my hands and then get a confirmation. So the intake was perfect, absolutely no need for any adjustment. 0 0.102 it was and it was absolutely right now coming i mean it's funny uh, 10000 kilometers or uh, i would say 17 18000 kilometers later my intake is exactly where it was i did not adjust the intake last time as well so uh, it's about 18 19000 kilometers and i still have absolutely no need to adjust my intake valve clearance it's it's spot on no problems at all moving on to my exhaust 0.23 is what I'm aiming aiming for. So with what I have, I should be able to make a combination of these leaves and get yeah. So I have a 0 0.127 and a 0 0.076. How much would that be? Or a point one zero two and a point one two seven would be point two two nine. This is good for a point two three valve clearance. I'm gonna be using that together to get my valve clearance for the exhaust valve. Now let's try and shove these two fellows in. Is it a little too loose? Yeah, this does seem 
just a tad bit loose but also it could do with a bit of tightening because I can tighten it so we'll leave the blades there adjust my exhaust valve now how do you go about doing it there are some special tools required so what you need is you need a tappet adjustment tool this is a three millimeter tappet adjustment tool three millimeters on the top for that fellow that you see there the top and then you need a ring spanner with a size 10 so ring spanner size 10 goes in like that and you open the nut you loosen the nut a bit And then what you do is you slide the blades, keep the blades in or if you don't have to do it with two blades and you get the right feeler gauge, good for you. And then with the tappet adjustment tool, let me just get it right guys, I'm sorry. Now, let's put So what I did now is I push the tappet adjustment tool from the top and counterclockwise is loosening it, clockwise is tightening it. Tightened it to a snug fit and then went ahead without letting go of the tappet adjustment tool. What you need to do is just tighten the lock nut. Once that is done, you will be able to push and pull, you're supposed to be able to do that. Now, I'm just not able to move my leaves, they're stuck. So that would mean that I have kind of crushed my leaves too tight in adjustment. So again, loosen the lock nut, put the adjustment tool in and release pressure gently to see to it that you can slowly slide your leaves out once you get that adjustment right without moving the top you can tighten your lock nut so now again can the leaves slide in as easily as they could before maybe not so easily there is a bit of a resistance perfect good enough just to be doubly sure two of them together not happening as easy as it was just a while ago there you go got the two of them in now to just pull and see yeah perfect perfect very very well set up and uh, just to be doubly sure tighten the lock nut on both the ends. 
Okay, so that was it. That was the whole of it. Now all that you need to do is just put back the covers on, put back the spark plug, put everything back in the reverse order. That's about it. And you're good to go. <laughs> as simple as that. And uh, this will always see to it that your motorcycle is in very good shape and form. You will have very good uh, uh, engine life too if you keep an eye on the valves. Uh, another thing, uh, good engine oil periodic maintenance changing your engine oil on time everything every little thing that you take care of will aid in the long run it will always see to it that this machine is a rocking machine uh, and it will stay that way with you till the end and that's very important that you know that you know your lack of maintenance also adds to uh, deterioration uh, the motorcycle um, uh, just kind of gives up on you if you do not take care of it. This is not to be compared with a car. A motorcycle uh, is definitely a high maintenance uh, vehicle than a car. So uh, please do keep in mind that you know you should not be thinking of 10,000 kilometer maintenance intervals. You should be very actively involved in the art of maintenance. When you do that, your bike stays the way it's supposed to. So all that I did was leave the intake valve the way it was work on the exhaust valve, make it just a bit, one tad bit more tight and good enough. So now I know my bike is good to go. I will uh, put everything back together and then uh, fire it up and then get back to you guys. Okay, so everything put back together. And so again, let me just run you through what needs to be done. Uh, close the inspection window. Close the inspection window here, or for that matter, uh, close this. Close the inspection window. Put the spark plug, put the spark plug boot, put the fuel line, shove the fuel pump connector. There's also a connector for fuel level, blue color connector. Connect that as well. Uh, put the tank bag back on. Be very careful not to strip anything while you put the tank bag back on the wires and everything. See to it that everything moves freely. All the wires move freely. Put the seats back on. And to fire the motorcycle now. Yeah, once you have everything put back on, kindly prime the fuel pump at least three times. Just so that, you know, there's the, the fuel starts flowing in without any hiccups, no air gaps in between. And then, Clutch in. There you go. Well, that's how easy it is. The whole of the valve uh, tappet adjustment or valve clearance check, tappet adjustment. Straightforward, easy exercise. Please keep in mind that this needs to be done periodically or at least checked. You don't have to adjust things, at least checked. So now the only difference that I feel is because I kind of went ahead and tightened my exhaust valve just a tiny bit more, uh, the engine is a little more silent than what it is, what I'm used to hearing. The engine is a little more calm and mellow and it's a more neat, clean note. Of course, that will translate into slightly more tighter riding or acceleration or ride feel for some time and then I will get used to it but I had a, a freer exhaust valve so this was a peppy motorcycle now it might be just a tad bit more tight on the throttle that'll be the only difference if you were to tighten the exhaust valve so uh, yep that's that my exhaust valve is still under the uh, uh, the values so that's that. Hopefully this video helped. If this did, give it a big thumbs up and keep fixing your own problems. Very easy, straightforward, simple job. I ran you through the whole of it. Do it yourselves. All you need is a certain bunch of tools. Of course, I'll add the picture of all the tools that you need and that'll be it. Plenty of videos online as well for you to take as reference. But if this helps, it helps. 
I shall see you guys on another one with another maintenance tip. Until then, this is Ben signing out for now. Ciao.